subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. And welcome to the iPhone 6 Plus, yes, the 2014 model, versus the iPhone 10s Max. Let's begin with a boot up test in three, two, one, and see which one can get there first. Now, yesterday I did the 6S Plus, so don't get this confused. Many people requested they want to see the one before the 6S Plus, which was the 6 Plus. This was that famous phone for bending. You know the video I'm talking about. And over here, you can see the 10S Max is definitely going to boot up first, it looks like, over the 6 Plus. So you can see there it goes. And the iPhone 6 plus just dragging behind so about five seconds or so behind so not bad for four years but still the tennis max faster on the boot up okay so let's test touch id versus face id this is first gen you can see there you go for the iphone 6 plus and it seems faster here in ios 12 than before so you can see touch id rest your finger to open and it goes right in so a lot of people will be missing that touch id but here over on the iphone 10s max we go to face id you can see there it goes. And the thing with Face ID is that you kind of got to swipe to open it. That's the only thing I think people have an issue with with Face ID. Because if you look at other phones like OnePlus or some Huawei phones or even Samsung's phones, you don't have to swipe. You just look at it and it opens. So one more time. But I do have to mention, I do feel like Face ID is definitely more secure than Touch ID. So I think it's an upgrade in security, but a downgrade in kind of like the way you open it in terms of speed. I think Apple needs to get it to where it just opens without you having to swipe. That would be great, or at least give you the option to turn off swipe or turn on swipe. Okay, guys, so we've arrived at the application portion of the speed test. The iPhone 6 Plus, one gig of RAM, Apple A8 CPU, quad-core graphics over here, for the right, we have the Apple iPhone XS Max with four gigabytes of RAM, A12 Bionic chipset, and this does have four core Apple GPU. Let's begin with calendar, both running stock iOS 12. The XS Max is ahead. What about calculator? That is the XS Max. Clock, the XS Max again. What about Twitter? So here's where you're going to see a big difference. In Twitter, it not only loads faster, but you can see that 120 hertz sample rate, just so much smoother than the iPhone 6s or the 6 plus and scrolling look how choppy that is for the 6 plus huge updates there what about snapchat you can see that is a win for the 10s max coming home let's go into instagram and i do want to mention that the swipe gesture is faster as well to come to the home screen over the iphone 6 plus so that's a nice improvement as well instagram lagging way behind here let's go into profile page and you can see even your instagram experience is going to be much better here so let's go into whatsapp and you've seen that chop on the six plus coming home and there we go so let's go into youtube so i expect another win here for the right and we do get another win here so this is to be expected let's go into trending and boom so once you're in the youtube app should be pretty good on both youtube's very well optimized let's go into prime video and you can see prime video who's going to watch movies first here is it going to be the right yes it is the iPhone XS Max, and here comes the iPhone 6 Plus way behind. Oh, wow. This is incredibly far behind. Let's go into Jaws, and you can see even loading the movie is a slower experience and choppier scroll for the 6 Plus. Let's go into Amazon, and I do see a lot of people still using the 6 Plus. So coming to this upgrade, you're in for a nice treat if you do decide to trade in your iPhone 6 Plus or get rid of it for the XS Max. Let's go into eBay. And you see eBay is ahead further, even further than some other apps over the iPhone 6 Plus. You can see, wow, that's an incredible victory there for the iPhone XS Max. Let's go into Slither, and it should pull ahead even more here on the gaming. So we're already playing the game while we're waiting for, we're already out of this game while we're waiting for the iPhone 6 Plus to load this game. So now we're playing here for the iPhone 6 Plus. So let's go into Jetpack Joyride, and you can see, again, a rocket to the start line for the iPhone XS Max playing the game. We're already in here playing the game here for the XS Max. Opening up the 6 Plus, you can see I'm already back home doing something else while I'm still waiting for the 6 Plus. So finally, if you were looking for a speed test where you've seen the XS Max just rip apart another phone, well, it's ripping apart its old competition in the iPhone 6 Plus. It's not really competition, but you know what I mean. It's old 
exact company making the same phone. So nice updates Apple did from the 6 Plus to the 10s Max. Let's go into Dead Trigger 2. And you can see Dead Trigger 2 way ahead there for the 10s Max. And maybe it'll load a little bit better here for the 6 Plus, and it doesn't look like it is. So we're out of that game already, and here comes the 6 Plus. So significantly behind gamers, you're going to love this update if you decide to do it. Okay, so here we go. 6 Plus is ahead. Let's go into PUBG Mobile 3, 2, 1, and see which one can get there first. I will skip ahead till we get into the match screen to see which one does load this first. Be right back. All right, guys, so the iPhone XS Max was so far ahead, I could have closed PUBG, restarted it, and still would have been waiting on the iPhone 6 Plus. So let's go to start. And this could definitely make up for a kill in the game. So if you're using a 6 Plus and you're playing a player that has a much faster phone, they probably have a better connection and a better, you know, experience. You're going to lag up a little bit maybe and get killed in the game. So I think that the PUBG Mobile on the XS Max is definitely much more enjoyable experience loads way faster that's obvious so let's go into antutu benchmark three two one you can see that is the tennis max on the right substantially let's go into geekbench geekbench is not actually well optimized yet for the tennis model so you can see that it wins on the six plus but i think that's just an update away so let's go into speed test from for winning on the newer phones you've seen speed test first on the right and let's go into imovie you can see imovie ready to go on the right and then on the left let's go into video shop three two one now you can see video shop is opened on the right first even though it had to load up the video as well so the tennis max is ahead here substantially over the iphone 6 plus when it comes to this application speed test all right so here we are with a multitasking test we're just going to go through these applications to see how many reloads we get imovie does reload here speed test no reload geekbench no reload and 2-2 two -two benchmark with the reload. We don't even have to wait. We're just seeing for reloads. And a total reload. So don't exit your game if you're using a 6 Plus. You can see Dead Trigger 2 or you're going to lose your space or wherever you were. So Jetpack Joyride pauses and comes back. So let's go into Slither. You can see that's close. So this 1 gig of RAM is just not enough for these current apps. As you see eBay even reloads. And you have Amazon. And with this resolution, it's even slower than the iPhone 6 when it comes to this stuff. So you see YouTube, this phone is just extremely underpowered here in 2018. So everything reloading, this is not, this is not what you wanna see if you're looking for an improvement in iOS 12, but iOS 12 is smoother than prior versions on the 6 Plus, but it still doesn't make the phone fast. It's just a little faster in some certain areas, like the camera opens faster, the keyboard opens up faster, but having that one gig of RAM is the real bottleneck for the iPhone 6 Plus. So here on the 10s Max, let's begin with Video Shop, iMovie. Let's go into Speed Test, Geekbench, and 2-2 Slight Reload. And there we go on PUBG. That was ready to go. Jetpack Joyride, ready to go. You can see a significant speed improvement here for the 10s Max. So these lighter apps, no issues. So you can actually leave the app in this in this phone and come back and you'll be right where you were. Unlike the 6 Plus, if you leave it, you're going to lose wherever you were in pretty much any application. So you got to use one app at a time and stay focused on that app on the 6 Plus. The multitasking around easily goes to the iPhone XS Max. All right, guys. So here we are with a video rendering test in iMovie. We're going to go ahead and save the same 50 second clip. Let's go ahead and save video and let's hit it at HD 1080. 3, 2, 1. See which one can export this movie first. So if you're doing video rendering, this is actually an arguable case why you would spend $1,000 if you're making your phone basically everything in one device. Then you definitely are going to get your money's worth out of the iPhone XS Max. As you see, it could have probably rendered this video two times before this guy finished. Let's see if it can do that. Actually, let's see if we go actually too late for that but anyway the iphone 6 plus here it comes on the export the movie and there it goes so the iphone 6 plus trailing way behind when it comes to video rendering but what about the internet speed now one of the best things about the 6 plus when it first came out was that you finally had a large iphone with a great internet experience but what about the 10s max how much faster is it uh, over the 6 plus let's go into apple.com three two one and you could see way faster to load Apple 
com and the tennis max does get improved wi-fi and lte connectivity even over the iphone 10 and the 8 plus and 8 so over the 6 plus you're going to get an even more substantial improvement let's go into yahoo.com three two one and you can see yahoo way ahead over here for the iphone 10s max zooming very similar but sometimes it does chop over here for the zooming on the 6 plus i think both still offer a pretty good web browsing experience like the 6 plus is still pretty good it's just not up to the level of 2018 standards yet so let's go into the how about we go into bing 3 2 1 and you can see bing is ahead there for the 10s max so again with another win for the 10s max in the internet okay so here we are with the final geekbench scores you can see a substantial improvement in both single and multi-core for the 6 plus over to the 10s max way ahead so that's going to be a huge update in terms of synthetic benchmarks as well as real world speed testing so let's go ahead and test one last thing the camera 70 percent improved for the older devices and you can see still faster for the 10s max let's go ahead and close them out and do it again three two and one and you can see the 10s max ahead but the 6 Plus is not super far behind on the camera. They did do a good improvement to the camera speed for your older devices. So in conclusion, the 6 Plus to the 10s Max is a huge update and a definite recommend if you're looking for performance gains and pretty much every other area, except for if you really like Touch ID, you like an aluminum body, you might not like this glass if you're, if you're into aluminum. You might not like Face ID if you love Touch ID. There's some things you can argue are better about the 6 Plus if you like those things. But at the end of the day, I think overall, the 10S Max represents a huge upgrade for you if you're going to do this upgrade. That's it for me, iPhone 6 Plus versus 10S Max. What do you guys think? Comment your thoughts down below. What do you think about doing this upgrade? What do you think about the 6 Plus, how it performed next to the 10S Max? I would love to hear that. If you found this video helpful, entertaining, informing, enjoying, do me a favor, click that like.